One of the most significant achievements of the human race was agriculture, the cultivation and production of food. It's what made it possible for humans to progress from nomadic hunter-gatherer tribes and go on to develop settlements, cities, civilization in general, and many of the technological marvels that we enjoy today. Interestingly though, we're now at a point where we've progressed so far that food production is now being taken over by machines. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but what I do know is that it's happening all around us. Now more than ever, robots are taking over food. I'm Drew Prindle, and this is Robots Everywhere, a show where we chronicle the slow but steady takeover of our future robot overlords and show you how they're making their way into practically every facet of modern life. So there are three main areas where robots interact with our food. During the farming stage, during the processing stage, and fairly recently they've also started getting involved during the cooking and serving stage. Let's start at the root of that, the farming stage. Without a doubt, the best example of robot farming is John Deere's autonomous tractors. Functionally speaking, these things are pretty much exactly the same as traditional tractors. Depending on what you attach to them, they can be used for planting and fertilizing and harvesting and a bunch more. But there's one key difference. These ones can do all of that without any help from a human. They're equipped with an absolutely dizzying range of environmental sensors and navigation systems and GPS, all of which allows them to drive along and do their thing with minimal human supervision. And sometimes none at all. The idea is that this allows human farmers to get more work done with less manpower. Tractors are just one piece of the pie though. There are also robots that take care of things like fertilizing and irrigation and even weed removal. Take DJI's Agris drone, for example. This monster octocopter is designed to carry a 16 liter payload of whatever you want, pesticides, herbicides, fertilizers, whatever, and autonomously dispense it over your crops. Now, if flying robots aren't your thing, don't worry. There are actually plenty of ground-based crop tending robots too, like this one from California startup Farmwise. This thing crawls through fields and uses artificial intelligence and a bunch of different sensors to analyze the health of each individual plant that it passes over. It then makes a calculation based on the plant's condition and dispenses exactly what that plant needs. Water, fertilizer, pesticide, whatever. All as it slowly crawls along. Now, in addition to agriculture, robots are also pretty well established when it comes to processing food as well. We don't typically think of them as robots, but for decades, food processing plants have become increasingly automated. So much so that at this point, the bulk of the work in the average food processing facility isn't done by humans. It's done by machines. Now, if you've ever seen an episode of How It Works, you've probably seen a factory food robot before. My personal favorite is the one where they show how hot dogs are made, which apparently involves this machine, which I'm assuming is called the Weenie Blaster 9000 because that's the only appropriate name for something that shoots out sausage that fast. That, however, is arguably one of the most primitive examples of a food processing robot. They get way more sophisticated than that. Like this pick and place robot from Omron. This thing uses computer vision to sort bell peppers and then places them in a stoplight formation before they're sent off for packaging. Again though, that's barely even scratching the surface. To get a full sense of just how advanced food processing robots are, check out the FlexiCut system. This machine is designed to cut and process fish fillets, which sounds easy at first, but is actually fairly complex. There's lots of variation and nuance to it because fish fillets aren't uniform in size, shape, or even composition, and certain parts of the fillet are more valuable than others, so the machine has to handle each one of them differently. To do this, it first uses x-rays to find the location of all of the pin bones in the fish. It then uses advanced software to determine exactly the right cut configuration and angle before finally using water jet cutting for bone removal and also portioning the fillets according to the specification. All of this happens in a matter of seconds. So clearly, robots have taken over food processing. But what about cooking and serving? Well, if there's any part of food where humans still play a bigger role than machines, it's definitely at this last step. Cooking requires a symphony of different sensory inputs, like sight, smell, sound, touch, and above all, taste. And right now, robots don't really have those abilities. But that's not stopping them from making some serious progress in the kitchen. Just this week, researchers unveiled an omelet-making robot that could crack an egg, beat it, pour the mixture into a hot skillet, and then move it around to prevent it from burning. I have adult human friends that still can't do that. 
Then there's also Flippy, the world's foremost burger flipping robot. Now again, flipping burgers might not sound like a particularly difficult activity, especially for us humans, but for robots, it's wildly complex. Things like physically flipping the burger or measuring the internal temperature of the meat are easy enough to pull off for a robot, but cooking a burger also requires understanding when it's done and what a properly cooked hamburger patty actually looks like. You and I can do that with our senses and some knowledge gained from years of kitchen experience, but Flippy doesn't have those senses or training, so instead it uses advanced computer vision algorithms and thermal sensors to make it happen. Now, whenever Flippy comes up, people get all worried about robots taking over jobs, but in most instances, including Flippy, they're actually designed to work alongside humans to make their jobs easier. A great example of this is the healthy, fast casual restaurant called Spice, which is in Boston, Massachusetts. At this place, humans prep and serve the food, but robots do practically all of the cooking. When you order something, machines dispense all of the pre-prepared ingredients of that dish into a special automated cook pot, which stirs and cooks the food simultaneously by sort of tumbling it around. Then, when the dish is ready, the robot basically just dumps the mixture into a bowl, at which point the human adds dressings, garnishes, and whatever, and then delivers it to the customer. The idea here is that robots don't replace human workers, they simply reduce the staff that's needed to run a restaurant and therefore allow it to operate more efficiently so that it can serve healthy, nutritious food at an affordable price. So while I am personally opposed to the idea of surrendering all of our human food making traditions to robots and kind of letting machines prepare all of our meals for us, there is no denying that allowing robots to help us out at every point in the process can make food cheaper, healthier, and more accessible to everyone. And for that reason, maybe it's not such a bad thing to have robots everywhere, even in our kitchens. 